okay shall we make a start then um let's just quickly run through what i'm going to be using today i'm using the bold phrases which were released on the 6th of june i think that was um they will be on lisa's website next monday which is the 20th because obviously creating craft have that 14 day exclusivity don't they so hopefully um 20th of june they should be on the website providing she's got stock left of course so I'm using those. I'm also using, although I'm not using them today because I've already done this bit, um, because stenciling's quick using the Ultimate system. But if I did two lots of stenciling, it would it would just take me too long. So I've already done this part of it, and the stenciling that I'm going to do today um, will be the butterflies. Okay, so I'm using the layering daisies. I love this set. And these, obviously, these interact really well with the layering circles because you can mix and match those two sets really, really beautifully. I've only used this one set today. Okay, so today I'm doing the layering butterfly. And when I first saw this, I was totally smitten. Um, I, I just... Uh, I love butterflies. And when I saw this, well just heaven in a box to be honest and then i'm using the bold squares the bubble squares i know they're out of stock at the moment but i'm only using them to sort of frame my work so let's make a start then first things first layer one butterfly now i'm going to use the same colors that i've used um for my base card so i'm using tattered rose saltwater taffy one of my favorites picked raspberry and seedless preserves because I just I just think they all go together really really lovely so layer one we're going in with tattered rose now tattered rose is going to be layer one and layer two um, layer one doesn't need to be particularly deep because it, it's just the base of the the butterfly um, I, I do like this I, think I might need a re-anchor for this to be honest it's looking a little bit a little bit pale I know it's a pale pink anyway but and I, I use the bijou brushes for like a larger area because um, I just think they give a really nice smooth coverage the, the wonder brushes are fabulous and um, but for like a larger area I do like the um, the bijou brushes now before I take this one off, I am just going to add a little tiny bit of the seedless preserves on the antennae. Um, just because they will be too pale if I don't add some colour. And you'll see what I mean when we come to the end. So I might add some more later, but then again I might not. Okay, so that's layer one. Layer one's done. Now layer two is just the wings, okay? So as I said, I am going in with the same colour, just a lot heavier. So I want this to be quite a little bit deeper than the first layer. You're not going to see any of the first layer really, other than the body here. Um, but I'm going to change that colour towards the end. Now I'm putting quite a bit more pressure on this. Because I want this to be a really smooth, solid colour. So that's layer two. Dead quick. So dead easy. See how the difference in colour? And that's just that I've gone heavier on the wings than I did on the, the first part. So going in with layer three. This is just the top wings. Now I'm going in here with saltwater taffy because it's a darker shade um, but in a, in a similar um, colour range. So to me there's, there's um, tattered rose, saltwater taffy and worn lipstick I think is, is one of the other colours that is, is sort of in the same colour family. So that's layer three. Layer four is the bottom wings and again I'm going in with the same colour because I, 
I just like it really. Um, okay, so again, quite heavy with this because I want this to be a really solid, smooth colour. It's just, just one of my, my most favourite colours in this range. Okay, now you can see there is a tiny, tiny slight gap here where those, those two um, parts of the, I was going to say leaf then, parts of the wing sort of meet but don't quite meet. Um, you can highlight the edges of those if you want to. So if I went in with number three, if I go back with number three and just come off the edge here with the ink that's on my brush, and just highlight the edge of that wing it will stand out more see you 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 do whatever you want your colors and the way you use these stencils is entirely up to you but I do like to try and do them a little bit differently so that they're not sort of just solid colors hi Brenda <clears throat> so next one picked raspberry now I'm using the stencil brushes for these so I'm going in with my picked raspberry, but I'm not going in as a solid colour, OK? So I'm just coming in off the edge of the stencil from the top of the wings and I'm just dragging the colour down that aperture. So I'm not filling the wing with colour. I'm only coming from the top and partially filling the wing with colour, OK? And then when we add the last layer, we're going to come in from the other direction and partially fill the wings from the other direction, but with a different colour. OK. Now notice I'm taking some of the colour off my brush onto the stencil first because I really don't want um, lots of colour in these wings. And you'll hopefully, when I've finished, I'm doing all this on one level as well. Now, I'm going to show you some different ways of using the stencil in a minute. And you'll see that the one that I'm going to use today, I've 3D'd, like I did on, my, on the sample that Lisa showed the other night. Um, but this, this is just the way to sort of, I just wanted to show you a quick way really. So I'm stenciling all this flat on on sort of one layer if you like one level um but if you were gonna no i'll come to that in a minute i'm gonna i'm going to say how i would do it slightly differently if you were going to 3d it okay but i'll i'll come to that okay so first bit i'm going in with the body and i want the body to stand out so i'm going in quite deep with that and this is seedless preserves Beautiful colour. OK. And now I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the picked raspberry, but from the other direction. OK, so really, really soft. I'm not putting hardly any pressure on this brush at all. So I'm just dragging the colour off the edge of the stencil, up through those apertures. Not no hardly any pressure at all here you can put as much pressure on as you want if you want the color a little bit deeper which i might do in a minute i might go back and add some more when i've lifted it off and had a look and um, take my color off the stencil rather than off my ink pad because then i'll know that i'm not going to get too much color where i don't want it Now if I lift this up, can you see how the how the shading, or whether you can see it. I don't really want to lift it up. Because if I lift it up I might not get it back in the right place. So if I lift the whole thing up, can you see how the shading is gradual in those wing apertures rather than solid colour? Yeah? Now I like that effect. Um 
rather than having a solid colour in those apertures. If you don't like that and you want to do them as solid pieces, that's that's entirely up to you. Your art, your your choice. Um, I just particularly like that effect. So I am going in a little bit deeper and I'm using a smaller brush which will give me a little bit more control over where this ink goes because I just wanted a little bit more than I'd got on those on those wing bits. It's very mindful less. Okay, I think that'll do. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So now that I've done that, if I just show you that in all its glory. Now obviously then I would die cut that on my machine because I just think it's I just get it in the right place obviously um, I just think it's it's a really beautiful stencil to use now if that's all on one level if you were going to do it on so that you were 3d in it okay you would do your base butterfly so I just put my piece of card in so you can see the stencil better do your base butterfly okay and then your wings that's not a problem because you're you're using those as your base okay so then when you come to do the other parts I would do layer 3 on a separate piece of card because obviously you're going to be cutting these out and do them do them at the top of the card so you've just got those okay and before you move that go in with number five and just add the detail and when you're adding the detail to these obviously you don't want any ink in the other parts so you just need to mask off what you're not using okay that way you just get your ink here right and then when you come to do the bottom wings do exactly the same but move your card up so that you're using just one piece of card and then do exactly the same with that so Add your detail in afterwards and mask off these bits that you're not using. You, you're going to have to do it. I'll show you. You can see this is what I've done. Just mask off your areas like that. Okay? So that you're only doing one part of the wing at any one time. And that way you'll get the colours that you want in the right place. And you'll also give yourself enough room to die cut the wings okay because if you try and do it like this and then die cut it i'm not sure that you will get enough space between the edge of this and the edge of the bottom one to die cut it properly so i would always do it as a separate piece okay i hope that was all okay that's all clear if you've got any questions just shout all right so that's my butterfly stenciling done now if i show you the base card this is the base card and again i've used exactly the same colors and um, if i just reach the layering daisies and just reach them out for you excuse the noise of the cellophane on the camera should have left them out really shouldn't i so you've got layer one which I did in tattered rose. Okay. You've got layer two, which I did in saltwater taffy. Layer three, which I did in picked raspberry. And then layer four, just the dots in the middle, which I did as seedless preserves to give you that finish. And I just think that, I just think it's so pretty. I mean, you can do it in whatever colours you like. Um, I was going to change the colours up for today, but I thought, no, I'll just stick with the same ones because I really, really like them. Um, so you can see I've used the, the bold phrases and I've already matted and layered all those so that it's all done and dusted. And the bubble squares, um, again, cut out, matted and layered, and I've raised both levels up so that it's it sits proud on that white background card. OK, so now I've got choices. Now I can decide what butterfly to add to this card. So this is similar to this one. And this is all done on one level. 
so I've just die cut that out so I could use that one I'm not using that one I'm just giving you choices okay now the colorways on the others wouldn't work on here but I just wanted to show you some different different ways of using the butterflies okay now no stenciling on this one in fact I don't think there's any stenciling on the other on this one and the other two but there is on the one that I'm using today so this one was just cut out of um, some card that I'd used the shaving foam technique on and then just cut the body out of the um, Euphoria glitter card the original set just to give him a body that's a different colour so that's that one then I did just the base in a purple card I cut the wings out the detail if I show you this set so you can see if I, actually if I just show you the dies that might be easier so I've just used the detail and then I've cut them out using the, the piece that goes around the edge um, so you cut all those out I've cut these out in um, Lisa's hollow card that holographic fabulous card that she brought out and then just added them to the base and then again I've cut the body out in the black euphoria glitter card okay so you could use that one then I've done a very delicate one this is just two layers of vellum now it, it's quite thin vellum um, and I would probably have wanted to use a more a more solid vellum a thicker thicker quality vellum um, but just to show that you can you can use vellum um, the only problem with vellum is how you stick it together and how you stick it to your card so I've stuck this together with um, glue so I've, I've glued the middle okay and I used um, my 3d glue gel to do that and then I've cut a body out in white glitter card and added that on the top so that you can't see that 3d glue gel underneath okay so it's all about how you would adhere it to not show the glue through um, I mean the red liner tape that shows through as well so if you just concentrate on that middle piece you can use your glue on that middle piece where those those glue dots are and just adhere it to your card that way okay I'm not using that one today either so this is the same colors which I did yesterday and that, this is the 3D one okay and again I've, I've raised it up with 3D glue gel um, and as I said with as with the holographic one I've just cut these wings out but I haven't cut the detail out okay I've stenciled that and then just cut the, the whole wing part out and you can see that there is a gap between the top and the bottom wings which I really really love so yeah this is the one I'm going to use today um, but if you see what I mean about when you're cutting them out if you do them as separate wings and cut them out I think you'll get a better um, a better finish and you'll be able to lay them out on your base card a lot better I did color the base card um, with my tattered rose so um, and I'm gonna I'm going to 3d this one as well because I just like I just like the effect to be honest um, I don't want to stick it flat I think it deserves to be it deserves to be sort of sitting as as proud as it can be to be honest so let's just add my 3d glue gel and then down the middle so my butterfly is going in the corner and I want his I want his little bottom wings to overhang that, overhang the edge of that square, like so. I'm not going to mess around with it too much because I don't want to. I want the 3D glue to just set. So that's today's. And then yesterday, while I was messing around, I just thought I'd show you this little card that I just sort of made dead quick, really. After I'd cut the butterfly out. On, on one of these pieces I kept the piece of card and I used it as a stencil so I inked through the stencil 
and then added one of the A5 stamps that Lisa bought out. This one is the Music Score, which I think is out of stock at the moment, and I'm not sure it's coming back. But you could use any of the background stamps. Um, the little set that she bought back recently, um, the you know the one with the splat in and the um, the text that would work nice or the postcard one if ever if any of you have got the postcard stamp that would look amazing in here but i wanted to use the music score to go with this little gnome playing his guitar which i've just colored in copics in the same colors to match the card okay. this is the satin card in the green bubble squares again bold phrases and the gnome set so it's just a different way of using those butterflies um, just for something really different. Two different cards, still using the butterflies, um, and that's the card, that's the butterfly that we've stenciled today. I really, I really would recommend these stencils. These background stencils are going to be so useful. You don't have to use them as a, as a block like that. You can use them off centre, like I think the, the orange one that I did, that's I've just used the layering circles and that I've used off centre just to sort of fill some of the card just to make it look a little bit different so you know oodles and oodles of different possibilities anyway thank you very much for joining me today um, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope I've given you some ideas to use the new butterflies and the new layering stencils bye for now mm -hmm.